Hey folks, it's an action-packed week. Since launch, over 400,000 of you have taken advantage of our free monthly marketplace offerings. And we're thrilled to share that in addition to renewing the initiative for another year, we're celebrating this milestone by releasing five new asset packs from the award-winning Infinity Blade franchise valued at $4 million in development investment, all available now. Mark your calendars for the Creator Appreciation Event, a special sale launching on Tuesday, November 5th in recognition of alumni who have contributed to the free content program so far. Thanks to all our Marketplace creators for supporting the Unreal community at large. In just two short weeks, we'll be kicking off the 2019 Epic Mega Jam, and it's the five-year anniversary of UE4 Jams. Featuring more award categories and prizes than ever before, it's shaping up to be our biggest jam yet. Join us on the live stream on November 14th for the Jams theme announce, and then you'll have a full week to create your titles from scratch. Get full details and sign up on the official itch.io Mega Jam page. The high-octane John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum is a neo-noir thriller that plays out against some visually stunning backdrops. Leveraging a VR version of their set, the team was able to quickly switch between lighting scenarios to determine lighting placement or try out different set design options months before the physical set was ever built. Preparations are underway for Unreal Fest Europe 2020, taking place in Prague from April 29th to May 1st. And if you have amazing game development stories to share, we want to hear from you. We're looking for speakers to present sessions that deliver real-world, actionable guidance and insight into any topic that helps developers make their games even more beautiful, inspirational, and performant. All speakers will receive a free pass to the event and accommodations. Fill out our call for proposals if you're interested in joining our lineup. Developers Enhance Games and Monstars modernized the Tetris experience by bringing it into VR with Tetris Effect. We caught up with the teams to find out what motivated them to reimagine the age-old classic and elaborate on how they created the game's surreal and otherworldly presentation. All right, we're on to our weekly Karma Earners. I'd like to give a shout out to Adno, Unearthly Whales, Luos, Crisp Clover, GeoDVS, Shadow River, Mordinac, D Demon, Every Nun, and Tour. Thank you so much for all your help on Answer Hub. To highlight the spooky season, our first spotlight is Shadows of Kepler, a sci-fi horror survival game. Driven from Earth, explore the hostile planet Kepler as Sergeant Cooper and try to survive in this new human era. Here we have Root Beer on Tap, in development by the solo dev of Hyper Noodle Games. Try to pour as much root beer in this VR 80s arcade style mug management as possible. And last up is Seiri, The Beginning, inspired by Pixar films. Help the extraterrestrial creature Seiri find a new home and their lost family by exploring a vibrant, mysterious planet. Overcome challenging obstacles together with Seiri's new friends, the inhabitants of the strange world. Thanks for tuning in to this week's news and community spotlight. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Unreal Engine live stream. I'm your host, Victor Broden, and with me today, I have invited Fabrice DeBarge, CTO of Prexinos, Hi. and Elodie Moog, uh, CEO Hi. of Prexinos. How are you guys doing today? Oh, we're doing fine. Thank you, did you? <laughs> yeah, good. That's great. Thanks so much uh, for coming, so yeah. on this, coming on the stream. Um, I think let's let's start off with um, the um, one of the amazing tools that uh, Prexinos has developed, and let's. Let, let's hear your presentation. <laughs> so uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to, to show our work. Thank you very much, again. Thank you, Victor, for being our host today. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, I am Elodie. This is my colleague, Fabrice. Uh, as you can hear, we're both French. <laughs> and we both have a long experience in traditional animation industry. We've actually had a, a lot of productions uh, for a decade uh, from humble French studios to very large and famous companies in the US and Japan and many other places on, on the planet. And so we decided to create Praxinus um, with five other fellows uh, almost a year ago. We're actually about to celebrate our first anniversary yeah. in a couple of weeks. Indeed. 
And uh, so we created Praxinus because we wanted to offer software solutions to reunite 2D and 3D animation within the same environment. Uh, our main purpose is the release of a traditional hand-drawn uh, animation software powered by Unreal Engine in order to keep uh, the great advantage of 3D animation, of 3D environment uh, with real time technology combined with the spontaneity of drawing. And so this software should be named Odyssey. And uh, I shall sh uh, show you a little mock-up of what we are planning to do right there. So keep in mind, it's just a mock-up on Teledon here with Unreal Engine, but it gives a, a good idea of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, basically, what we, what we would like to do is the ability to combine uh, 3D backgrounds in final level and having the possibility to directly animate in 2D uh, on, on levels, just like we have here. We have a waterfall uh, that is uh, applied on a plane. We have the splash animation that is uh, placed on a, on, a, on a sphere. And obviously, we have here this uh, animation with a teddy bear that can be played uh, through the sequencer. <laughs> That's yeah, what we are uh, trying to do. But here, we are still in Unreal Engine. We're not in Odyssey. Because uh, when we started working on ODC, we realized, um, well, we realized we, we need to build a couple of things because uh, we realized there was no uh, brushes, there were no uh, actual place to draw in Unreal Engine. Uh, so, and back in those days, I mean, uh, a year ago, when we started to work on ODC, we realized uh, there was no uh, compatibility with tablets. So we realized we actually have to build all these tools we have. We actually need a, a canvas to draw, we need a brush, we need a, a, a place, a way to, to pick colors, to, or all these things are necessary to, to draw. Because if you can't draw, you can't animate in a traditional way. And so that's actually how Iliad was born. Because that's what um, we are actually to talk about today. It's Iliad. Um, so yes, yeah, so we realized that if we need to build all these things, so a, a place to draw, a brush engine, a, a way to pick up colors, and even work on the compatibility of tablets, uh, we realized there was two possibilities. Either we would keep these uh, tools secret for years, because we need uh, still <laughs> there's still a lot of month of development to create Odyssey. So either we would keep, keep that secret for years for the solely use of Odyssey. Or why not actually read that as a plugin um, to yeah to give it to any uh, Unreal Engine users? It was Fabrice's idea to do that, and that's an idea we all embraced at Praxinus. And so yeah, that's the long story. It was necessary, but that's how actually Iliad was born. It came from a project of a animation software to be turned first into a plugin, and yeah, that's. I think now I'm letting Fabrice to give you an introduction to the end. No more talk. Yeah, so um, let's start with, with the plugin. So once you, you have installed it, uh, you are going to have some new option in the engine directly. So uh, if I just click on Add New, I have uh, like a new category, which is uh, Texture. And so I'm just going to make a new texture from here. I have a small window asking for the width, the height. So I'm just going to create a new asset. I'm OK. I can just then right click and edit my texture with Iliad. This is it. And this is a basic layout of the plugin. Um, this is really the place where we are going to paint. Um, so if you are familiar with uh, the common uh, painting software like Photoshop or Painter, uh, you would find your way. Uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. I mean, you have everything related to brushes here, so I can select like uh, this brush just to start. Okay, I'm painting. I have some exposed parameter. This is a stamp I'm going to use. I have some other parameters that will be common to all brushes, like the step values, the uh, smoothing, interpolation, and so on some basic tools like uh, color picker or paint bucket. By the way, I'm just going to uh, convert everything to a long page. And on the other side, on the right, you have everything related to colors. So that would be the color wheel, color sliders. Uh, you have many possibilities such as uh, RGB, 
view saturation, luminosity, or CMYK. So you can play with all this. We have a layer stack with layers, and uh, we can tweak the opacity. We can go into blending modes. So that would be almost the same as the one you would find in any software, such as Photoshop, uh, like uh, multiply, screen, uh, colors, overlay, and so on. So this is the, the basic layout of uh, the software. Um, so um, Iliad will come with a wide range of tools. And uh, I just would like for now to show you a few of them uh, so you can have a better idea. So uh, here I have some basic uh, crayon. I could use something else like a scratchy pen. So this one is more darker. Um, I could use like uh, some tools that would just uh, be really common if you are an artist. You are probably used to uh, have an airbrush. Okay. Um, you can also use uh, some dwizzle. Oops. Okay. I'm just going to select something else. So, as you can see, um, so the, the plugin is really uh, having a wide range of tools that anyone can use. So uh, it's, it's really good for painting. So here I just have shown some uh, really um, common basic, yeah, basic yeah. basics. Yes. Then after uh, there is more uh, complexity we can bring to that. Uh, of course, we can tweak the size, opacity, flow. You can even change the blending. For example, you can erase with this. But that's still very common. Um, I can switch to uh, less conventional tools. Um, the tools that would be uh, more procedural. So um, say, for example, uh, I'm going to use a um, um, tool that will uh, smear colors. So I'm going to use a smear spray. So the more I'm going to push with my stylus uh, on the tablet, and the darker it's going to be. So that's pretty nice to, to draw like uh, trees or uh, clouds. Um, <clears throat> then what else can we have? That is cool. We have a pixel stream. Pixel stream is nice. Uh, I'm going to use the blue. And the more I push, and <laughs> the more rectangles I'm going to have, and they all follow uh, the direction of my stroke. Um, so in that way, you can build interesting textures. It's really up to you. Um, and even we, we can go to uh, painted um, stamps, uh, if I use like this one. So here I have my stamp, as you can see, with many exposed parameters. I can tweak them. That's Exposed parameters are parameters that are uh, typically uh, specific to that brush. So I should have this here. I have some examples, some other examples of leaves. Uh, All these brushes should be uh, included within the package when Iliad will be available. So uh, you can study them, see how, how they were built, and get inspired from on the brushes to create your own, your own brushes. <laughs> yeah, and if we can uh, achieve so many different results, uh, it's mainly because uh, the brush engine is blueprint based. And this is really the, the, one of the strongest points of the plugin. Um, if I can just uh, like, I'm going to make a new brush so you can have an idea of how to get started with uh, the plugin. Uh, so let's make a new asset. That's an asset that comes with the, the plugin because it doesn't exist with uh, the engine. So I'm making a new Odyssey brush. I'm going to call it uh, live. Okay. And I'm going to double click. Okay. So here for, I mean, most of the people watching this live stream, you recognize the uh, basic blueprint interface. Uh, it's much simpler because we have less uh, possibilities uh, when using brushes, I mean, in terms of, of blueprints. 
but you will find your event graph, your functions, your macros, your variables. Uh, you can compile to check if there are any errors. You can save. Uh, on the right part, you would find uh, the overrides. I'm going to cover that maybe later. Uh, and the new nodes. And there is a wide range of new nodes you would find that would be uh, like Odyssey Brush. Well, they are still under the Odyssey name, but the plugin is Iliad. It's uh, already has yeah. explained it uh, <laughs> earlier. But there is a really uh, a wide range of nodes. So they are the ones that would uh, help you to manage and retrieve information from the, that stylus. That would be uh, the pressure, that would be uh, like uh, the altitude, the azimuth, uh, that would be the position on the screen. Um, and everything is just uh, available here. Then you should be able to work on colors. So uh, you can get a color and just split onto different channels. That would be RGB, uh, CMYK, and you can work on colors onto each channel. And then we combine everything to make a new color. Uh, we have some functions and we will have some transformations. Uh, so that would be uh, flipping, rotating, uh, resizing. Uh, you can use matrix as well. You can combine and compose matrix. So there is a wide range of possibilities. So if I want to do something fairly simple at the moment, um, I'm just going to uh, use that wire on step, or maybe I, I should just cover what is a step uh, before so everyone will understand it. The step is the amount of pixels I'm going to have between two uh, stamps. So here my stamp is just a one brush and every 50 pixels I'm going to have a stamp. If I just change the value to let's say uh, 15, I will have more stamps. Okay, and if I really go to uh, like uh, one or two, I'm just going to have a line. That's very simple and anyone can understand this okay and so let's be back to the graph so i'm just going for now to use a simple stamp simple stamp this is it so on every step i'm going to stamp something and i have to uh, decide what i'm going to stamp so i'm not going to stamp a boolean i just need a <laughs> A texture 2D, that would be this. Okay, and compile. And I'm looking for a stamp, so... Um, and that's something um, interesting here, because here the stamps are just 2D texture that were imported in Unreal Engine. And what we plan to do with the release of Iliad uh, that is that many other stamps will be available. And actually, all the stamps comes from actual drawings. <laughs> Page on paper that were scanned and cleaned. We have many, many of them. You can show we have watercolor, we have painting, we have crayons, we have yeah, ink stamps, and so on. I had some fun. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to add some new notes uh, to to. Uh, so now I have just my stamp. Maybe I should call it stamp. It would be much better. Stamp. And um, so I know what I'm going to stamp on the screen, the image, but I just need to tell to uh, the brush engine where I'm going to do so. So I'm going to use the node get X and get Y. This is it. From this, I can already paint something. Let's try. So I need just the live. Live. OK. And this is it. I'm cool. painting. OK. Uh, but right now, I'm just, uh, if, if you look, I'm tweaking the size and nothing changed. OK. I would need uh, some other nodes. Even if I just change the color, nothing is changing. So I'm going to add some new nodes to my graph so I can improve the situation. And so let's go. Mm, I'm going to take this all. OK. Um, so I would like to have uh, like uh, resize, so resize uniform should be okay. Uh, resize uniform, so I'm just going to plug this here and here. 
Um, and I'm going to use the get size modifier. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I can select uh, the resampling method between uh, nearest neighbor and BDNR. It's really up to you to choose the quality and uh, over the uh, fastest brush. Um, so BDNR should be good. So now if I paint with this, uh, if I use a very small size, say uh, 32, okay, it's painting, but if I use 80, it's okay. But with India, you can really go to very, very big brush. See, yeah, I'm using uh, 500 and even uh, maybe uh, something more. I would like to precise. Uh, I see on the on the screen, it looks like it's laggy, but it's not on no our. <laughs> So uh, it's very, it's very fluid on our screen. That's. I just have no see. idea. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully it's. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, we it want it to looks pretty good over here. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, the refresh rate nice. is okay. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> so. So yeah, everything in the the, the plugin is uh, multi-thread. So the more powerful your computer is, and uh, the bigger stamps you are going to be able to use. Uh, then after. All will depend on all the nodes we are going to use. Uh, say if I want here to uh, change the color, I'm going to use the field preserve alpha. Then connect again. Uh, and I'm going to add a color, so get color. This is it. And why not use uh, the pressure sensitivity of my stylus? So I'm going to use the uh, get pressure. Uh, get pressure, just right there, okay. And I'm going to multiply this, so float, multiply by float. This is okay, plug, plug. And I should have something really interesting, uh, hopefully. Oops. And if I change my color, it change. Perfect, good. And so step by step, you can build your one tool. Uh, it's really, uh, it could be really fun. In fact, uh, it's also a very fun way to learn blueprints uh, and to discover what you can do. Um, and we can really go to very complex uh, brushes. Uh, just to give you an idea, I'm just going to open uh, this one, Kaleidoscope. So uh, before just drawing with it, okay, here we have something which is much more complex. Okay, if I look at it, I have loops, I have branch. So if something happened, do that. If something else happened, do something else. We have mass expressions. We have some other new nodes that would be specific to Idiad. We can use vectors. And uh, for that specific tools, in fact, it's going to stamp at several positions at the same time. So if I use this, uh, so I'm going to use the blue and you. Oh, wow. It's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, it's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, another example would be, uh, we have a text brush, I think. Yeah. Um, but the text brush is just a brush to paint with some letters. No. <laughs> And uh, obviously, it is the most useful brush ever. Yeah, <laughs> the interesting part is in <laughs> blueprints. We we get a string, we pass every letter into an array uh, or maybe a struct, and then we assign a specific bitmap to uh, each letters, and then we stamp. Uh, because right now I'm using a simple stamp, so we are using bitmaps. And maybe later on, we will develop some uh, text stamp. So we'll be able to like have an input uh, that would be uh, to type fonts. So we'll see anyway if uh, you guys, the community is interested to have uh, some specific uh, way of stamp images or fonts or whatever. Um, so this is it. You have an overview of how it works. Um, then uh, maybe I, I'm going just to close all this. And uh, even this one, I'm not going to save. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, and uh, maybe yeah, we'll yeah. then show a couple of examples. Yeah. So yeah. here, 
Maybe first, yeah. We, we have yeah. a few paintings we have made with the plugin. So <laughs> at least you can see uh, anyone can use it for just uh, painting. And I take the mouse. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, you oh, could yeah, have a, a lot of use for this uh, in a 3D I'm just environment. Closing that is unnecessary to have running behind. Uh, so, yeah, uh, now we're running, we will be showing a few different examples of what we can do with the Iliad. Uh, first thing I would like to show is, well, actually, when I think 2D and when I think video games, I immediately, immediately think about uh, sprites and all these, you know, because I grew up with old video games like Harvest did and probably many people watching us today did too. And so I would like to show you how Iliad can be used to paint sprites and, and, and do tie sets and stuff. So first of all, I will create a new texture. So obviously this time I don't need something that high. I will uh, use something smaller, like let's say 68 over, uh, uh, no, that's 68, 64 or whatever. Uh, 64 over 128, yep. And so I can edit with Iliad. Uh, something you may notice at the moment, we have some glitches that may happen when you create a new texture. It's an again, and that's something that must be fixed, but it's not the case right now, but whatever. <laughs> so uh, for this sprite, I'm going to use a pen brush. This pen brush is not a procedural one. It's a classic pen brush based on a uh, just a little dot like this. So it's not very useful when you paint on very large texture because it is aliased, so you can see the pixels. But here, in our example, it works pretty well. So I shall take a color to make a trunk because I want to paint like a tree. Okay, do something like that. Perfect. And I will add another layer to paint more details on, on the trunk. So we'll take another brush called a pixel brush. This one just uses a simple stamp. Let's just take another color. It just uses a, a simple dot like this. So it's very convenient when you want to paint precise stuff. So obviously I'm not doing something very, very accurate. It's not the purpose here to do something very pretty, but it's just to explain how you can do something very quickly. Uh, now I will paint the leaves on my tree. So I will take the brush showed earlier by Fabrice, that is the leaves brush right there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will change the color. I will do some, yeah, let's pick in like more orange, red, foolish uh, colors. <laughs> <laughs> and if I paint like this, okay, it's great, but it's white too big. <laughs> so I will lower the size a little bit and I will lower here the spread as well. that and now I should paint yeah so this brush is very convenient when you need to create uh, a big sack of uh, randomly colorized pixels which is really convenient right there um, so here obviously the result is not really perfect it's just here again an example to explain how it works if we go here in our projects we can see here into pixel art where these are here we can see different examples like we have uh, two different bushes that were thrown into yeah it's much too large so it's, it's not very pixelized uh here another tree that was drawn i took more time to make this this tree and a sword and another bush and mushroom and stuff uh, there is another way, as I said, to, to use Iliad is to make ties, to make tie sets, even. So I will create a, another uh, texture there. Up. And again, it's way too big, so I will use 256 over. Can you move the keyboard because it's smashing? Yeah. No, 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 on the right, on the right, just because it's smashing on the okay. deck. Yeah, okay. Sorry. And 256. Perfect, and I can create the asset right there. Okay, again, the little glitches. We haven't seen that. I'm doing it live. Right. 
And so here we have, <laughs> we have the tile set and I'm going to use a nice brush that is not really made to, to paint anything but rather to paint grids. It's done by Fabrice because he's our brush specialist. And uh, it's actually using just a single pixel to paint a grid like this. But here obviously it's not uh, interesting because we have too many pixels there so I would like to have a perfect tile. And uh, let's say I would like to, to have uh, four tiles, uh, horizontally and four tiles vertically. So let's do some math. 256 divided by four is 64. Yes, I'm really good at math in my head. It's not because I've heard that a couple of times. Uh, so let's paint that and here we go. And I will up to it. So here we have the grid and I can create then a new layer, place it under uh, the, the grid, take any other tool to paint, and brush, please, again. Okay. I don't know, take any other and paint, and then add layer, add, add details, take another uh, brush to paint uh, anything I would need. Uh, let's add a brush and I up lower it and paint up something like that. And so on and on, I could spend hours to, to make tiles, but obviously it's not the purpose here to, to do that. Instead, I'm going to show you a proper rendering right there. So here we have the element drawn in Iliad, where you have a couple of things. Uh, for instance, here the trees were uh, called using a simple uh, brush called stamp. That is very, very basic. It is just made to, um, to call any texture from from your uh, uh, from an engine from the content brother so I could use a, a tree or something or like a, say use bush I hit this one and so I could uh, snap it somewhere here but here it's quite too big but I understand the point <laughs> and so again once you've done the tile sets directly in Iliad you have the possibility to turn it into a proper tile set I mean like an uh, an Unreal engine object so we'll put that. And uh, so here we have the uh, Unreal Engine tile set that was used as a tile map right there to make tile maps right there. So then you just have to select and you can paint your lever just right here, which was put within our level. Hoppla. There we are. And as you can see, we have a, another animation. We have an animation. We have another sprite we haven't covered yet. And uh, so this is another way to explain how Iliad can be used. It can be used actually to make quick animations. I will show you the details of that. There's one. So here, if we look at the clipboard, you can see it was made. It, it is made of four uh, images. And actually, those images came originally from the same uh, project. I just did it with Iliad and it was very simple actually. I just created a texture that had a, a special size and uh, I think wait, 80 by 80. And so I just created the first uh, flame, then I duplicated the layer. I hide this one and then I take the pen brush again. There, I use the erase mode so I can erase that. And then I can take the right color, so I can use the up, the color picker to paint then the rest of the flame. And so I, I did that uh, three times, I duplicated the layer three times to make three different images. And then each layer was exported like this, because we have a possibility to export layer uh, as textures. So uh, each time you, you create a layer in Ilya, it can be exported as a separated 2D texture in Unreal Engine. And actually, it's something <laughs> you actually have to do if you want to keep your layers, because at uh, the moment, since we are editing Unreal Engine textures, we at the moment, we don't have a way to keep the layers within the 2D texture. It's uh, something we we also have to, to we also have to find a solution for that. But at the moment, it's not the case. So if you want to keep all the layers, you have to export uh, anyway using that uh, that tip. <laughs> so 
So we close, you know, and we save it. And there we are. We have our little animation here in our level. So that's done for the 2D, uh, the 2D world. And now we are adding another D and we'll go for the 3D world. And I'll be working with, with the girl. So as we can see, this little girl is quite uh, pale. There's no details on her, on her skin. So I shall work on her. And so we did with Iliad. And this time we will be working both on Iliad and uh, the viewport on the left. I might actually change here the view. Something, yeah, looks more normal like this. Great. So, uh, first of all, I will create a new layer like that. And uh, let's say I would like to draw her eyes. Fortunately, we have an eyebrush. The, the eye, the stamp is made from a vector-based drawing. And it has something interesting is the fact that if I paint on it, I draw with it, it draws symmetrically. So each time I'm drawing, it paints stuff there like this. But you will notice that's a very bad method to find the right place to stamp her eyes. So I will display her mesh, which is much better. So I use the Elodie level. Should I say my level? Because my name is Elodie. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, bad joke. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so I will zoom in and i will stand the eye right in the middle of, there we go we have her eyes i know i'm painting the white it's clarity and i put it below again i will take my pen brush because it's very quick to use that one it was white and i paint up all this clarity on that side i used the shortcut p to pan the canva And there we are. Now she looks more like a human being. Uh, but let's now go a little further to add more details on her skin. So uh, I will put her a little makeup and I will use a makeup brush right there. There we are. And so again, this brush is so very interesting because it can also paint symmetrically. I'm going to say, oh, change the color. If I do something, we can see it paints symmetrically like this. So here we're painting on the horizontal axis, but we can also uh, play on the vertical axis like this, or both. Okay, so let's put her some lipstick. And uh, maybe let's, it's Halloween, so let's make her like a goth girl like this. And I shall, uh, let's say 15. And I'm painting her lips very quickly. Yeah, that's a big advantage of the 3D real-time technology, which is behind the plugin. You can really get the instant results. And, you don't have to go into another software to uh, do some little adjustment like this. So it, it's pretty convenient. <laughs> uh, like very flashy eye shade. And I don't know, let's, let's make her blush just like I do. Yeah, I'm very flashy. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like a clown. It's awful. <laughs> That's a little bit of a mix capacity. between Easter and Halloween. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes. Young girls, don't do that. It's ugly. And uh, yeah, let's get rid of the makeup brush. Now let's play with another one, like the freckle. She's made to make freckles. So I want to use red because she looks like she will have chicken pox. Uh, yeah, very much better. A very tiny little dots on her nose and her face. And another one we can say because here she's not very she's not ready to party yet. So let's go for another brush, which is the tattoo stamp. It is really nice because this one is actually made of an array of six different brushes. If we click on it, we can see here we have a heart, we have a lotus flower, and we have many other ones. And to pick up the right 
uh, array, we have to change here the number here in the value. So uh, if we want, the, for instance, the last one, this is the one I want to use, I have to use the six, sixth uh, texture. If I want the hot, I have to use the zero texture and so on. So uh, I created a new lady, yeah, I did. And so I will uh, snap this tattoo right there. And now she is ready for Los Dias de las Muertos. <laughs> And there, we change her skin because here she's too uh, too vivid to be uh, to be a dead girl. So I'll make her white, and then yeah, she's all ready to trick or treat. That looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so maybe now I'll let Fabrice again uh, to talk about uh, the other possibilities with uh, with Iliad. Since we can go much, uh, not really photorealistic, but a little bit. Yeah. So, oh. so I, I just uh, wanted to to uh, try to apply this to more realistic uh, people because we are in a cartoony situation, I would say. Uh, so I took that guy from the uh, content example. And uh, so let's go a little bit closer. Okay. And uh, just going to, whoops, cut this. No. So the guy, I'm going to uh, open the diffuse, edit, and he's going to add a very, very bad moment with me, I'm afraid. Um, so let's start with uh, a boost brush. Okay, and it has some exposed parameter. Um, you later. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I forgot, indeed. It's always better when you use layers. I always, I'm saying that to students and I just don't apply it. It's okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is it. It's a brush uh, that is using its one color. I mean, it doesn't use uh, the color wheel or the sliders. Uh, it just has some specific colors. You can even change them, but that would be those three one. And each color has its one weight. So I can decide uh, how much of that color would be on the screen, uh, which is quite convenient in this situation. Um, and uh, once again, this is an array of stamps we are uh, using randomly uh, to get something really uh, uh, natural. And uh, what's next? Uh, maybe uh, it's Halloween, that's it. So I'm just going to add this car. At some point in uh, so here uh, that's quite a lot of stamps again and uh, they are going to uh, follow the when I would paint uh, I'm just going to make a stroke and uh, that will follow the tangent and the normal of my stroke so uh, let me zoom um, let's do that and this is it okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, then now uh, I made a quickly a broad brush, which is using uh, three stamps and three different ways to use colors. So it's maybe the time to show you that we can just divide a color into RGB and uh, why not uh, then after getting the HSL change and tweak some channels, then we combine everything and colorize. Uh, we are using some math as well. Um, and uh, I'm going to, going to quit back here. And if I like you this, oops. Well, I should have maybe I've used, uh, or maybe I'm going just to erase that. Um, I can change my blend for my tool because I'm not happy with this. So I'm just going to erase. Um, okay, and just put that onto another layer, which would be here uh, with a specific blending mode, which is multiply. Um, multiply is okay. And let's go back to the blood. That gives whoops, much better results. Okay, same here. And it's really interesting because the fact you can just export every layer means that 
then you can recombine uh, your textures uh, onto a specific material you are going to use later. So it's good for testing, for drawing, and then it's up to you to work onto the material to get and achieve exactly what you want. Um, then sometimes um, you can build your own brushes to uh, to work pretty fast. If I look at the tank here, I'm just going to close this. Um, where is the tank? Oh, over, over the button. Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to. Teamwork. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Hey. Okay. Okay. So uh, I have a 2K, over 2K uh, texture. I'm going to open my uh, camera brush. So once again, this brush has some specific parameters, some specific color it's going to use. And well, um, every time I'm going to paint with this, you um, will see that the colors are going to uh, change and shuffle. So this is it. Oh, it's too small. Let's use a bigger one. OK. So I have uh, an array of stamps that is going to be randomly used, and another array of colors, which are going to be used as well. And so that's the way you can uh, paint on anything. But they are a much more complex situation. Even with simple 3D meshes, uh, such as uh, this bar. OK, so let's have a look to this. Um, so I'm going to the barrel. OK, so here I am in position. I have a diffuse map, a UV map, specular, and many, many things. So uh, it's a more complex uh, material. So let's open it so we can have a look to this. See, we have many textures. OK, so I have to deal with all that. And um, let's go uh, step by step. OK, so I'm going to open this one. Whoops. Uh, maybe I'm just keep that one. Uh, delete this. No. Yep. And I'm just going to make a new layer on this one. Uh, and my problem is, uh, first, maybe I'm just going to uh, improve a little bit the colors so everyone can see. Uh, let's multiply and use the paint bucket. So, yeah, you can see there was some kind of metallic aspect to this. Yeah. And uh, my problem is um, there is a tile, uh, I mean, uh, if I use, I, I would like to basically to add some rust to this. So if I use my rust brush, I will get immediately into problems. I mean, okay, it's just uh, making what I want, but oops, if I just paint like this, and if I go at the border of the texture, then well, it's not working because I should be painting at the same time on the other side. And well, you might not be comfortable with that. And uh, that's exactly where uh, the fact that the brushes are using blueprints uh, is really cool. Um, because for that specific situation, uh, say if I use uh, like a new texture, create a set, OK, perfect, open. Uh, I have made a specific uh, function to uh, get rid of this. Um, let's open it. OK, so this is going to be a new stamp. I did call it looping stamp. It has two new options, which are tiles. And it's really huge, because if I go into that function, I open all this. <laughs> then I can go into sub functions. Uh, and there are many branches, as you can see. And then here I'm going to have also many, many conditions, situations, and so on. But all this is just bringing me the ability to uh, like paint. But every time I will touch the border, it's going to uh, come back on the other side. So in that way, I can paint like this. Ooh. 
and I'm sure I'm going to uh, build a seamless brush, a seamless style, sorry, or seamless texture, I should say, actually. And that's what I'm going to use on these assets. So let's go this. We don't need that one. Um, whoops. And so if I lose one, like this, really... should be on that one, actually. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because we added uh, some uh, empty place in the material to add some uh, rust. But the texture is used in, a couple of, in several places. It is used both for the base color, so we can see the color, and it's combined with the normal map, so it can, uh, yeah, carve, can, yeah, give a, a, like, a little volume on the, on the barrel. Well, as, you, as you can see now, I don't have any problem. If I touch the border, it will paint on the other side, and it's pretty good. Uh, then after, whoops, sorry. And after it's up to you to uh, tweak, erase, change things. Uh, you can add so many uh, cool stuff. Uh, let's add something like, uh, yeah, uh, this one. Maybe I will tweak the angle. Uh, I'm just going to uh, stamp this. Whoops, it's in erase mode. <laughs> oh, it should be right there. Ah. <laughs> and once again, I can just uh, make erase and find West that will be looping and wow, West on the top of it, or even erase a little bit, and it should be okay. And if I need, I can always rotate everything so I would be on the right position. And of course, you can also display the mesh to be sure where you are about to paint. Indeed, uh, <laughs> and I should have started with that. <laughs> Is Just it? right there. This one, okay. LOD number zero and UV channel zero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That way it's. And if we go to the material, if you, I don't, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we go, I okay, maybe I will just take that. Uh, if we there, go there to the parameter, we should increase the value of the. Yeah, we can see it's more and more deeper like this. Oh. Thanks to the A, it's too far too harsh, but that's, yeah, the purpose of the rest. I leave you alone. <laughs> okay, and just uh, to finish, uh, it's, uh, let's open now the this one, which is a normal map. And uh, I just wanted to try this, and, and it was pretty fun, actually. Uh, I created a normal stamp normal crackers oops and uh let's go maybe some place here we'll see if it works correctly um it's going to add crackers but there was maybe all... you should delete what was on the rest because yeah <laughs> i think it's too much <laughs> yeah <laughs> so let's just here, yeah. this yeah here we go. and here we go you can see we have uh many many crackers anywhere And it's it's cool because when you switch to uh, other software, and there are many software which can do this already, uh, then you re-import everything. It's a long process. And sometimes uh, the results are not exactly the same within the engine and within the other software. But here you can really exactly have in your game what you see and what you see is what you get. So what you see is what you get, <laughs> difficult for us. And that's a quite important point um, for anyone, I think. Um, well, this is it. Yeah, and I was about to say, it's something important Something important must be, say, must be said here. Uh, we, we don't want to, we haven't made we haven't made Iliad to be uh, in competition with software like Mary or Substance that are incredible pieces of software. Um, here, just like Fabrice said, uh, it's just like a, um, a tool to help you to make little changes if you are looking for photorealistic uh, renderings. That here, what we have in mind is to, to focus on painting on 2D aspects that can be brought into an real engine. We are not looking into uh, being in competition with Mary Substance and other software like that. Yeah, because um, you're able to uh, see the 
the post process and everything else that you have in your scene and then immediately you know the color or what the UVs yeah. look like yeah. it's, a, it's a good tool to, to run some tests and uh, check quickly if everything is okay but it's just changing the color or texture mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, yeah, I was maybe about to show a few graphical examples if you're curious, just to see how we can actually use graphical things on a realistic 3D model. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, chat seems really excited. Um, a lot I of them are. <laughs> I can see the chat say. <laughs> there are still a few, a uh, couple of examples that we really don't stop. Yeah, just the, the two last ones, and then uh, a big surprise that was not planned on, on the schedule. Uh, so here we have this little dagger that comes from uh, the Canton, the marketplace as well. And so I maybe take the mouse right here because it's more comfortable for me and my back. <laughs> and so I will take the dagger right there. And yeah, the go into uh, the um, uh, to the material we can see how it was uh, quickly made and actually what I like I love to play with emissive so um, here we will be applying uh, a texture on the on the blade of the dagger and it will apply a, a color that uh, loops from a clear blue to a darker blue and then switch off and be enlightened again. What a broken English, that's awful. <laughs> so we'll edit that texture with here with Iliad. And again, I create a new layer. And uh, so we'll display the mesh first. Do you know where I have to paint? There we are. Oh, perfect. And this time I will use not the pen brush, I will use Frost. <laughs> it's uh, one of the very rare brushes that I have made. And this one is nice to say, uh, to make, as I said, uh, frost. And maybe I will zoom in a little bit so you can see. Yep. And yep, we can see how, how it works. And so we'll be using that brush here on the blade, I'll make it a little bigger. And so I can paint like this. And you can see in real time the rendering and the emissive part, the lower the opacity as well. So if you want to make like a magical axe dagger, it's uh, it's actually working pretty well, I guess. <laughs> and other example, so there, finish the scene. <laughs> so here we have our little pumpkin. And so I'm going to work on that to carve it. But first, let's look quickly into the material. So it's a more complex one. And we actually have different uh, interesting things. So we have yeah the, the special order and all the things, and we also have the base color plus another texture that will be used to paint on the pumpkin, and that painting will be reused here through the normal map to looks like we carved into the pumpkin. And then later I will add another part, so I will reuse again the texture uh, to carve the pumpkin. And I will combine it with another one, this texture there, to uh, put lights within the pumpkin, to make like there is a candle within the pumpkin. So let's carve it. Yep. So we have one, two, three, four, five instances yeah, of the at the same instances. time. It's quite good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll use the shortcut R to, <clears throat> no, not yet. Uh, focus. <laughs> Okay, that shortcut R to rotate the canvas. There we go. And I will use makeup because it's really comfortable to draw symmetrically. And I wanted to paint the Unreal logo, but since you already have it on <laughs> your stage, I'm not going to complain. And so I will, what I'm going to do, I uh, will uh, increase the flow. And I will lower the side a little bit. There I am. And I create a new layer and I put in black. And so I should paint not symmetrically because I forgot to change the symmetry center. Bad Elodie. <laughs> uh, so here we are. Like, uh, 48 by 148. There we go. Okay. So this time should work. 
Yes, it's working. Maybe I will up, up like this. Maybe a little up up. And Smiling. Here we are. And so now I have carved into my pumpkin. So we can see here, thanks to the normal map, looks like there is a, like there is some depth. depth, yeah, in, in the car. But obviously, since we're not really mastermind yet with our new engine, if you turn, you can see there is no real carving maybe we'll find a solution later to do that but it's not the case right now and so i carved the little pumpkin and now i'm editing this one to create the light the candle within the pumpkin and so first of all i will change the color so you can see how it looks like here we can see how the colors is changing there is a gradient from black to to red i can create a new layer and i will use smear brush there we are and so this one just like other brushes uh i was used earlier this one is using two colors so i will paint gradients uh that are depending on the pressure on my stylus so uh first i will paint very strongly and yep and then we can see the light that slowly appears within the pumpkin and there we are <laughs> that looks awesome <laughs> thanks and uh, yeah so here we are done with um what we were planning to show you uh, until this morning. Now we are ready to show other examples. Yeah, uh, in fact, I was. Um, we went to uh, animation studios because uh, we have a uh, 2D animation background, and uh, well, uh, we visited. Uh, we visited sorry a couple of them, and um, they told us for those who were already uh, working within the engine that they wanted to be able to do storyboarding within the engine and. That was uh, something uh, really cool, but really complicated at some point. So um, last week, I I did mind something maybe to uh, to uh, improve their workflow, and I think I'm going to to uh, give that with uh, the plugin as well. Okay, maybe we can keep that open and just open the storyboard. <laughs> So <clears throat> I asked many, many questions in the Unreal Developer Network to make this happen. And so I made um, um, oh, that exactly an editor utility widget. Uh, so I can just run it. That's really, really simple. I didn't have time to uh, build uh, cool buttons with everything. There are only three options. Uh, and uh, the basic basic idea of that is just it's making a setup. And uh, that setup is just going to uh, bring you a master sequence. Then you can add empty shots, or you can find a folder with many, many images. Click on uh, Add Shots from Folders and get everything directly into the sequencer. And that's what we have done here. And if I just uh, lock the viewport to the shots, now I can play one of the very first animatic made uh, within the engine and painted with uh, the plugin. And uh, so there are many, many improvements we can uh, do for that. It, it's done with uh, the scripting uh, plugins uh, that are available within the engine. And um, well, um, you get some shots with some specific names. Uh, you can enter inside each shot and uh, get your camera cut, your camera actor. If I switch back to the um, 3D view, let's switch back to this. Okay, you can see we have everything 
which is close together and we jump from camera to camera like this. And so we might add, depending on the, the community and the needs of the people, but we can add many other options just like to insert a uh, specific shot or specific painting, add some uh, empty images, maybe open the plugin to uh, tweak them. Uh, but anyway, that's really uh, where we are wanting to, to, to go. I mean, it's making a storyboard animations, 2D animations. So for 2D animations, there was a lot of work and it's not going to be in uh, the plugin. It's uh, the biggest- There's bigger, still a lot bigger, of work to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bigger project which is behind which is odyssey yeah. but uh at least if with the plugin we can already do that uh quite easily and quickly that would be a, a good step i think uh, which brings us to actually what are the improvements to come uh, to iliad because at the moment iliad even if it is great there are still things that are very basic for instance you probably noticed that if we are so worried about adding always a layer is because we can undo what we drew we can only queue erase but you can't undo we haven't uh, in undo stack yet so that's awesome. something that must be done before we release the plugin it's one of the the most important priority right now um so uh we're still missing shapes like rectangles lines or pro and all this stuff so you probably saw the icons but they're connected to nothing at the moment. They are almost done, but it's just a, uh, it's just a, uh, um, a matter of, of days, weeks to be added. Mm. Uh, we, in terms of smoothing misses, we just have average. So it means that uh, maybe you can show uh, yeah, yeah. Add any it's texture, okay. I, don't, I don't care which one, yeah. Perfect. So, uh, yep, let's have it. Thank you. So yeah, we only have uh the stroke options yeah right so here we just have the average mode which means that depending on the on the stroke you do you can have a delay between your yeah on your uh between your um, stylus on, between the cursor and the line because it it is smoothing the line so it's something made on purpose and there are other ways to smooth a line we can use gravity we can use pulled up we can also make object for instance we have options like uh, catch up that is uh, not working right now and uh, we can also add um, HUD or HUD, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, to, to display uh, the, what, what, what direction the line is going to take. There are a few things like that that should be uh, added. Uh, we need automatic gradients because here we just have the big paint bucket that can uh, paint colors everywhere, but we don't have proper way to make gradients like just a draw a line from this to where there and then you have your gradients like in other painting tools uh, we must add options to transform resize warp or move an object on the canvas because it's not the case yet and we also need to bring uh, tools like selection tools to select area move this area and tweak them uh, that's still missing uh shouldn't we do anything yeah. um a few other things, if I may. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, at, uh, right now you have seen that the depth of color is just uh, eight bit. Yeah. But uh, the plugin is going to work in uh, sixteen bit as well. But you would need a uh, sixteen bit stamps, and same with thirty two bit. Yeah. Uh, that should be some within the November probably. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So for tomorrow. Sorry. For tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, no, <laughs> no uh, I'm joking, sorry. At the end of November, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what, what else? So, uh, as I said very earlier in during the live stream, is the fact that uh, when we started to work on uh, on a real engine, we realized there were no uh, uh, tablets were not compatible with Unreal engine. So we had to edit Unreal Core to make it compatible with Iliad because if we can't, couldn't use the tablet, it would make sense to make a painting for me. And now since uh, Unreal 4.23, there is, uh, Unreal is natively compatible with uh, ink tablets, which is actually great. Uh, but, see, but still, we, I think we will probably develop another tiny plugin. So we'll be also compatible with Mac, with Linux, and so WinTab API for Windows, uh, so we can use the full power of uh, Wacom tablets, for instance. 
and uh, something yes yeah also adding aliasing there are a few things that still have to be done but uh, better some nails maybe yeah, better <laughs> some nails as well yeah or maybe a little cosmetic stuff to, to be added uh, and so that's why yeah we will we had to delay a little the, the release of the availability the availability of the plugin we hoped to release it for this month but finally we will probably would be releasing it uh, well, I just... <laughs> that oh. would be at the same time yeah, on the Unreal Engine uh, 4.24. 20, yeah. yeah. Uh, as a beta version. As yeah. a beta version, yeah. So it will be free for a limited time, but at least it will be free. <laughs> because and that uh, will be on the. Uh, will it be available on the marketplace then as its first release? Yeah. 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 yeah, because we actually. What we are looking for are is a community. We are looking for people who are. We can use the, the, the plugin, give us feedbacks, to, uh, tell us tell us what we should improve, what is not a priority of the thing. That's we used to work that way for a decade uh, for another company, and that's something that really miss. We actually are eager to talk to you guys and yeah. you know how you actually like our product or not. <laughs> it's almost uh, one of the very first time we uh, show will work and now we are really keen to to get feedbacks and to know what to uh what direction we should uh follow yeah um, so. go, go ahead facebook twitter instagram practicing the uh, forums uh, and really engine forums yeah i'm the one who manage all the things so go ahead i'd be really happy to read do you have things. a uh, do you have a discord channel as well yes we have but it's a private one but we can actually create a, a public one, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's another good place for the community to, um, you know, give you immediate <laughs> feedback and maybe report bugs and whatnot, and and, and talk yeah, about uh, how it's working. Uh, I'm very impressed with just the entire scope of the plugin already. Um, there, there were a lot of questions during the uh, the first couple of minutes, and you sort of covered them all. It's like, are there layers? Okay, yeah, there are layers. Um, what's the resolution? <laughs> oh, it's higher than we need. Okay, okay, great. Um, so it's it's very impressive. Um, that, was, that was a great presentation. Did you uh, did one of you draw all of the images that you had in the uh, in the project? Uh, the elf and so yeah, it's a combination of uh, all people from from Praxinus. There are drawings made by Fabri. There are things made by me and by uh, other yeah other. Uh, Clément. It's Clément. Uh, uh, here it's Antoine. Yeah, uh, uh, that's you. Yeah, mine and the dog is you, mine too. The, the, this yours. one is mine. Sorry, no, yeah, to, for the credits, so, okay. Elodie, uh, Clément, that's me, that would be Elodie, and uh, Antoine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're beautiful. They cannot, be, they cannot be here today, but uh, anyway. I hope they're supporting us from afar. <laughs> yes, I believe, uh, maybe we can verify uh, Galendil <laughs> Um He seemed to know a lot about the, 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 the plugin and the future of Praxinos, so I think everyone just assumed mm -hmm. that he he works with you folks. <laughs> Maybe it's people from our family. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, uh, would you guys be ready for a couple of questions that came through? Sure. sure yes. Go yes. Ahead. All right. Something that I, I wasn't entirely sure if we touched on was if if the um, the plugin and the drawing is vector based. No, uh, it's bitmap based. Yeah. It's been bitmap based at the moment. We are thinking. Maybe in the future to bring vector-based elements, but uh, not immediately. All right, all right. Um, and then mm -hmm. just just to repeat, since some of these questions were answered um, by Galendil and, and and you folks as well, um, what are the max and min resolutions that you can do with Iliad? Uh, you mean when uh, painting with a stamp, or mm -hmm. the texture on the canvas? I believe I believe the texture itself, the texture that that it creates. Okay. And uh, we have the same limit as uh, the engine, which is AK over AK. And then, of course, it depends also on the uh, the power of the computer. Yeah. yeah sure. But but, but uh, in the engine, I think the the max resolution definition uh, is. Uh, one uh, eight thousand one hundred ninety-two over the yeah. same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did it. Um, see, and then they were asking if, if you can draw paint directly on meshes, and I believe you can indirectly paint on the meshes in the texture. Yeah. Um, 
and, and so, yeah. but but you're not able to like actually paint in the viewport um, on the mesh, no. right? No, no, no. That's something. Well, to be honest, it's not a priority right now because, mm -hmm. as we say several times, we want to focus more on the two D parts to making a, or our next uh, our next purpose here is to create an animation layer. So uh, we would like to focus more on what we know very well, which is two uh, D animation industry. Uh, but I'm not. Uh, but it doesn't mean we won't never do that. But it won't be a priority. <laughs> Maybe something that uh, should be done is uh, having an idea of the um, the area, 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 uh, the place where your stamp is going to, oh, to yes. be stamped. Sorry. The area. <laughs> area. And because uh, once we get this on the 2D uh, canvas, we can get it on the 3D. So you would yeah. know exactly where you are on the 3D mesh. I'm not sure if it's mixed. because you know at the moment when you paint you don't know what you're about to paint uh until you actually painted it mm -hmm. yeah. so uh yeah it would be nice to have a display of the the, the brush before you actually painted you before you stamp it in place yes yeah, so some kind of hud you would also have in the mm. 3d viewport yeah and that will give you a little bit of a, a, a reference um yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if you want to do more free form as well sort of try different things and um, check that. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, they were curious how how many bits per channel does the tool support? So uh, as I said, uh, right now we have uh, eight bits. Yeah, eight bits. But uh, it won't be complicated to bring the yeah. other bits <laughs> to have sixteen and in float images. Yeah. yeah. It's not just not done right now, but it's uh, it's in the, already in in the process. That's great. Um, and then, um, when will this be be available? Several several people were wondering when, and, and we we answered that it will be um, around the release of four twenty four, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Which is still um, to to be announced because I believe the next question yeah. will be. So when is four twenty four coming out? Um, yeah, it will it will be this <laughs> this this year. Um, let's see. We covered that one. Um, can you merge layers? Yes. 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 Easy, easy, mm -hmm. um, so and then uh, not not several layers, and, uh, uh, not a bunch of layers, but just one by one at the moment. Yeah. But it won't be complicated to uh, yeah. select layers and then merge all of them in once. But at the moment, it's just one by one. Yeah, you have some. Do you want to bring up the screen, Greg? Then we can show them just real yeah. quick. Not sure. <laughs> Thanks. This is just why that you right click onto uh, one layer and merge down. But it just merged with the the one below. Nice. Yeah. Easy peasy. Uh, let's see. And another resolution question. We answered that. Uh, let's see here. Um, they were asking if it works on, on other assets like Paragon characters. And I believe, yes, that's the case, as long as you have access to the texture and the model. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, not with Paragon uh, characters, but with the Infinity Blades as well characters. Uh. So. Uh, you mean you tried them? Yeah, yeah, okay. I know, I remember, but uh, I really I don't remember where the characters, all the characters come from. I know, for instance, that the the easels and the brushes and the palettes here come from the marketplace and from the back. So we had uh, like uh, the dagger and we we had a couple of things. Yeah, that there were a couple of them that came from the Canton place, but I can't remember if they are from Paragon, from Infinity Blaze, or uh, any others. There was a nice, uh, I don't remember exactly who did sense. that, but there was a nice uh, car. Um, yeah, well, it doesn't come from the car. Yeah. I saw those images, but yeah. And the flames. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah that's it. Flames. It was the, the one we used for NSC Festival. Yeah. One of the very, very first things we, we made. And, but uh, uh, so maybe we didn't understand uh, the question. Uh, um, they, they were just. Uh, I, I believe the answer is that yes, you, you can work on any models and textures that exist. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they sure, were just being whatever. specific about uh, the, the the paragon oh, characters. Yeah. I think yeah, it should be possible. Most of the things come either from the content example or from the marketplace. Mm -hmm. There are a few things like the pumpkin and the girl that comes from that come from a, I don't know any other site where you can actually buy three uh, D assets. But yeah can be anything. <laughs> yeah, we, we purchased a few assets and we 
tweak them a little bit with Blender. So uh, yeah. So. yeah. Let's see. Um, and they're also a little bit curious about Odyssey, um, and and if it's uh, is it still on track to be released in 2020? <laughs> Tough question. We we'll see. <laughs> Maybe perhaps an alpha test. Let's see, um, they were curious. Um, is this possible to do at runtime and save out the textures? Um, oh yeah, you mean like in like you're in playing uh, as a video games, right? Correct. Yes. Oh, yeah, we, we made yeah. a quick test about that uh, this afternoon. So and yeah. we, we just uh, and tried to, to play into a level. And, and I don't know if we can actually play a level. I, we yeah. haven't tried that. So I maybe should open. Let's open maybe the dog. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Canvas. Canvas. Yeah. Uh, what is it? It's one. OK, then uh, edit. Um, this. Oops. If I just hit the play, I should be playing. And if I release this, um, let's use whatever. Yeah. yeah, paint on the on a dog face. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So as you can see, I'm playing yeah. and I'm painting at the same time. So. And if you stop, it, it remains on place. Yeah. Yep. This is it. That's awesome. Yeah, I believe they were they were talking about the possibility of being at being able to add it as a uh, feature to a game, mm -hmm. uh, which oh, I believe yeah. would require a little bit of extra work, oh. considering that all of the tools are mm. editor only, right? Um, yeah. Mm, yeah. But just the fact that it that's works at runtime and that it updates at runtime that's that's really cool. Uh, yeah, that's to, like this is clearly beyond our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. it's something we have to check because uh, it could be really simple or really complex to develop. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I will that's, give you more, more and that's answers typically, later. Typically, the kind of things that we would be really happy to discuss with people who would like to try in the ad, uh, so when it will be available, of course, uh, to make that kind of test. Uh, it's really um, great for us to know all the multiple uh, uh, use case yeah. that can be ways to use uh, yeah. this. Mm. All right, let's see. <laughs> I, have a, I, have a, I have a couple more for you. Um, during seamless tiling, can you multiply the yeah. tile so you see a three by three grid? Uh, not yet, but that would be pretty cool. I think uh, uh, it's actually missing, but uh, it shouldn't be that hard. Uh, by now, uh, if you, oops, I maybe should be, um, sorry, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, if you look here, uh, we, we used uh, a big uh, plane mesh, mm. so uh, we can check in that way, but that was not convenient, so if, we can do it directly uh, within the plugin uh, with just a simple shortcut. That would be great. And I, I understand your point. I mean, it's uh, I think it's maybe doable. Yeah. Just you just hit a key and you get the uh, missing part, so you can mm. check uh, how it's uh, tiling. Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we can uh, we can follow up. Uh, I, I will make sure that you guys get all the questions so that um, if there's something that you want to fill in more information on afterwards, we can head over to the forum and um, and answer them. Um, is it GPU or CPU based? It's uh, the brush engine is CPU based, but everything that would uh, bring that into the three D real time into engine is uh, GPU. And in that way, uh, we are not taking resources from the GPU, and uh, so we keep uh, the engine as responsive uh, as it was uh, without the plugin. So I think it was the best choice. Mm. Because um, the engine is mostly based on GPU, so uh, 
we are not in competition to get uh, the GPU uh, RAM or uh, uh, VRAM and so on. And that might require um, a much beefier GPU then um, to be able to do both. Um, how do you, how do you find drawing in Unreal Engine in general? Do you find that you have to do extra tricks to draw accurate lines? Mm, at the moment, I would say that since we are still lacking of procedural pen brush, yes, a little bit because if you are looking for a very clear line, since we can't have at the moment a smooth pen brush, uh, yeah, it's you are to work a little bit to have a, a, a good quality line. If you are looking for something more graphical, like more um, like charcoal or sketchy. Aliens or sketchy or something more sketchy, I think, uh, would be quite, quite good. But in terms of responsiveness, it, it is the same as other painting software. Uh, we, we are uh, doing uh, this slide on the eight core computer yep. with uh, 64 gigabyte of RAM. Oh, yeah. So uh, it's not that uh, powerful. I mean, uh, you, you now you have mm -hmm. computers with uh, something like 32 cores and uh, mm -hmm. and we are still responsive. Uh, we even had several sessions of uh, Unreal open at the same time and we are still able to draw. So it's OK. And uh, I, sh I will also bring a point uh, I forgot to hear about the improvements. Uh, we are still working on a, well, this is actually the biggest thing we have to finish uh, for Iliad. It's the, a, graphic, a graphic library because uh, uh, it's something we are developing because basically Unreal Engine is based on OpenCV and we are making our own graphic library to be able to, to to make much more, th more, more things, to have very large textures, as you could see, but even larger, because we know Unreal Engine should sooner or later have uh, like 16K on 16K textures, which is really, really large. Uh, we could, so, uh, because at the moment we're limited to RGB models, but uh, if we, when we will finish the library, we could also work on LED models, which is more convenient to make uh, real gradients, accurate gradients, and many other things like that that are still in the process. So it's uh, at the moment one of the biggest challenges we have to deal with uh, to to finish properly the other. Mm. That sounds good. Um, <laughs> can you create layer groups slash folders? Nope, not yet. Not but yet, but uh, won't be difficult to do. It should be done, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, and then they were curious a little bit more about. Um, the uh, the options for the tools um, is there select cut paste cut and paste not yet. no not yet not okay. yet that's among the, the improvements things <laughs> so the usability improvements um, let's see yeah. um, to the list yeah yeah <laughs> see uh, if you do vector based in the future will you be able to switch between the two or will one replace the other. No, it would be between two. We don't plan to get rid of bitmap. We are from bitmap, and we want to keep bitmaps. <laughs> but there are ways to uh, tweak that a little bit because we can record some uh, um, stylus position on the screen uh, when using a bitmap, and maybe so we can maybe uh, be able to change uh, the shape of the lines in bitmap. Yeah. We'll see. It's a, it's a it's a big work, so yeah. it's not for tomorrow. Uh, we we have to see. Yeah, we're a tiny team, so we are working with really baby steps. Yeah. But... step by step. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was actually the next question. How many people are working uh, are working on the development of Iliad? So the the company is uh, so we have seven associates and actual eight workers. <clears throat> it can be explained because we have chosen a very special um, uh, status for a company. We've chosen to be a cooperative company, which is quite rare in, in, in France and abroad, uh, which, which means that uh, associates must be, uh, must be um, employees yes, uh, in, in general. And so everyone, every associate is a, an employee, but some employee 
are just working like one hour per week and they're just acting like uh, consultants so they can give us advice because for instance one among our associates we have a 2d animator and storyboarder so uh, his his advice are very priceless and uh, so among the people who are really active within the company we are five and among these five people there are three developers and Fabrice, who is the, the CTO, and me, who is the cheerleader of the group, <laughs> and the female <laughs> excuse, <laughs> the female quota. <laughs> All right, and I think we've actually made it to the last question, and they were curious if the, okay. uh, if the plugin, uh, if it's open source. Uh, no, not at the moment. Yeah. All <laughs> right. Those were all the questions, and I think we're up at time as well. That was about an hour and a half. Um, thank yeah. you both <laughs> so much for coming on the stream. Um, chat's been really excited. I'm pretty excited, especially considering that I'm not an artist who's <coughs> very familiar with um, drawing inside um, inside other tools like Photoshop or Blender or ZBrush. And it, it seems to me that I will be more familiar with your tool because of my experience with the engine and, and the engine's interface and the terminology used. Um, and especially when it comes to, you know, it's, it seems so quick to prototype something or be able to get something in really quick without, uh, for reasons like you mentioned, the sort of import export um, where mm -hmm. I can just, oh, I wonder what, how this would look like and I can immediately just draw it inside the engine. Um, so it's, it's quite impressive. Uh, excited to see it released. Uh, they, if, you, if you just joined recently, they, they mentioned that it will be released around uh, the release of uh, UE4, uh, 424. Um, so that's exciting. Um, thank you both. What time is it for you guys right now? I think it's pretty late, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's 8.30. Okay. Yeah. Not as bad as some <laughs> of the guests I've had on the stream. <laughs> some of them that's had okay. to <laughs> wake up at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm looking at you, Chris Murphy, if you're watching. Oh, well, uh, well. <laughs> so uh, but once again, thank you so much for coming. Um, let me just mention a couple of things that we do every stream uh, to make to mention to all you guys who are watching. Uh, the entire stream is captioned and it will be uploaded as a transcript to the channel, uh, usually within a week or two, depending on the length of the stream and the technical language that we that we use during it. Uh, it's a really good resource, so you can go and search for keywords such as shader, material, blueprints, etc., um, and you can go and find out where in the stream we talked about that. Um, we know that the streams can be a little bit long and it's sometimes tricky to know which part of it that might be relevant to you. So the, for me, the transcripts really help uh, being able to go back and know where we, we talked about something specific. Um, as always, let us know how we did today, what you thought of the stream, and what you would like to see in the future. Uh, I believe Amanda will hopefully be pasting a, I think she already did actually, and there might be another link coming in the chat. Um, let us know what we did, what you'd like to see in the future, and then if you give us your email, uh, you will participate in a sweepstake for an Unreal Engine t-shirt. And I believe it's actually this t-shirt right now. Um, uh, I would just before, because I know we're about to, to end the conversation and the yeah. stream, I mean, uh, I would really like to thank uh, especially the three developers who worked pretty hard on the plugin just before the live stream because they really crunch a lot <laughs> to make things really smooth and, and, and great for the live stream. So thank you very much, Clément, Thomas, Mike. Thank you for it. And um, maybe also the, all the guys who helped in the Unreal uh, yep. Developer Network because I asked so many questions about blueprints and scripting the interface. So. Thank you, guys. Sure, appreciate it. Yeah, chat, give it up for everyone who worked on the plugin. Um, it's it's definitely impressive, and it looks stable. You know, everything seems seems to work. The, the, you did mention a couple of glitches. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's quite normal. Um, we it, it's not it's not the first time we see that. Uh, in my opinion, it looks like it would be ready for me as a user to use, and so, so that's impressive. So thanks to everyone who uh, who worked on it. Um, make sure you hit up our user groups if you would like to meet other developers in your area. Um, if there is no user group in your area and you are interested in what it means being a user group lead, uh, send us an email at community at unrealengine.com and we will tell you all about it um, and the possibility of being able to set up a user group in your city. Um, our community spotlights is something that we have every week. If you want us to let you know um, or if you want to let us know what you're working on, make sure you hit up the forums. The release channel is a great place. Uh, Discord is another. Reddit, you name it, all of these social media channels, we exist there, and we would love to see what you're working on. Um, we are getting a little uh, low on our countdown videos, and we think they're a very cool part of the live stream. Uh, to send us one uh, as sort of as a prospect of being one of our countdown videos, take 30 minutes of you working inside the editor on your project, 
fast forward that up to five minutes and send that with your logo uh, also to community at unrealengine.com and we might have you as the countdown. Uh, don't add any uh, overlays or such. We will, we will do the countdown, but please send us your logo so that we can put it on there. Uh, if you're streaming on Twitch, make sure that you use the Unreal Engine category so that we know what you're streaming, that we can follow along, everyone else. Uh, and then make sure you follow us on social media for all news Unreal. And a big special thanks to Elodie and Fabrice and everyone at the team at Frixinos for coming on, spending the time with us. Uh, I think we're all looking very much forward to the release of the plugin. Um, and uh, I'll make sure to let's update the forum, uh, the forum announcement when the plugin is live, uh, so that everyone sure. can go ahead and uh, and check it out. And I think without further ado, next week uh, Tim Hobson is going to come on the stream, and we're going to talk about how to keep calm and look for the checkbox. So I hope y'all will join us then again. Uh, until next week, uh, we're saying goodbye and bye to you all. Thanks so much for coming on again, uh, and that's it for today. Have a good day, good night for everyone, good evening, good morning maybe. <laughs> bye everyone. Thank <laughs> you.